Yes, sir. Good morning, Noah. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Good morning to you guys, too. Thank you very much for uh, giving us your time this morning. We will uh, throw it out to some questions for Noah Shannon. If you have any questions, please raise your hand Excuse me, by clicking on the participant button at the bottom of your screen. Good. Yeah, the first question, Noah, is from Leah Van. Hey, Noah. Um, I was talking to Kyler Shot yesterday, and he was saying how he goes over film with some of the defensive linemen like Logan Lee. Um, and I was wondering what kind of insight you can gain from going over film with people like from the offensive line. Yeah, definitely. So that was something I did when uh, Coach Polisek was here, kind of like ask them what are they looking for and when we're pass rushing or, you know, like, when they're run blocking, like, what are they looking for when they're trying to reach us? Or, like, is it the number on our chest or is it our shoulder pad or what? So it get, definitely gives you a better understanding of what they're trying to do, and it can help you out on the def defensive side of the ball. Noah, the next question is from Scott Dockerman. Yeah, Noah, what's it been like playing teams that are just so completely different week after week after week? Uh, uh, in particular, two weeks in a row, these kinds of preps for Kent State, you know, the up-tempo, RPO style, and then you got, you know, slam ball coming up with, uh, you know, 14 personnel uh, with Colorado State. What's it been like for you, and how do you think this helps prepare you as a unit for the entire season? Yeah, so Kent State was definitely different because we haven't seen any tempo, especially that fast. They were running plays like every 16 to 20 seconds, so we definitely had to be on top of our stuff, and especially when it came to a conditioning standpoint, just being able to be out there for all three downs or, you know, those longer drives too. But when it comes to uh, Colorado State, I see it like a very similar uh, offense as to Wisconsin. I know that the old Wisconsin QB's coach is now the OC there. So I understand they have a lot of similar schemes. It's a lot of downhill stuff. So it's definitely going to be our most physical game we've played yet with them liking to get the ball to their uh, big running back and get him going downhill, so. Noah, the next question from Chloe Peterson. Yeah, a lot of defensive players like Ryan Moss and Jack Campbell throughout the season have been talking about the next man in mentality of the entire defense. Like, what can you say to that? Like, what have you seen in the locker room and on the field for that? Yeah, definitely. That's something that KF or Coach Ferentz, he emphasizes every year. Like, there's going to be injuries. Football is a physical sport, and everybody knows that. It just comes down to preparation. You have to prepare like you're a starter. And that's watching film, you know, giving it your all in practice and things like that. And I think that's something the whole team buys into. And I think everybody's just waiting on their opportunity to get on the field. Noah, the next question from Kennington Smith. Hey, Noah, how are you today? Good, how are you? Good, good. My question is, Coach Farron said before the season you were one of the players that he felt good about on the defensive line um, amongst a few other veterans, but there were, were more question marks. Now that we're three games in, we've seen a lot of young players step up. For you as a veteran, what is it like to see younger players, less experienced players kind of come of age, earn the trust of coaches, and have success in the games? It's great for us because it gives the coaches more confidence in them. You know, when, say, I get tired or, you know, Logan gets tired, then Coach Coach Bell can feel confident in putting, you know, Lucas, Y.A., Louie, you know, all the younger guys in because they've been showing that they can fill those roles and keep the standard of the defensive line at what it is. The next question, Noah, is from Scott Dockerman. Yeah, Noah, in what ways do you think you've improved? You've uh, you've got uh, a low center of gravity, which is works for you. But uh, I know your technique has to be pretty sound when you're built that way. How have you been able to use that to your advantage? In what ways have you have made strides to become the starter that you are right now? Yeah. So a big thing with me, KB always told me that my pad level is going to, you know, play a lot into how successful I am beating blocks. But also this year, I've been working a lot on my separation. You know, getting locked out and being able to see, have vision on the ball carrier. And I feel like that's been a big help because if you don't have separation, then you're not going to get off the block because the whole time you're in there with the old linemen, they're just tightening their grip on your jersey and it's going to be hard to get off those blocks. So really separation has been a big part of uh, what I'm trying to improve this year. 
The next question, Noah, from John Steffi. You know, what's been your message to some of these younger guys who are now thrown into a larger role on the D-line than in years past? Yeah, just like I said earlier, like, your time's going to come. Like, you got to be ready. I mean, you saw Isaiah Bruce was out there this past weekend. That's like my little brother out there, and I was so happy when he got his first tackle. I ran off the sideline or down the sideline screaming his name. I was so happy for him, but it just comes with preparation. Like I said earlier, you got you to gotta prepare like you're a starter. That's something that we emphasize, and I mean, I think a lot of the younger guys on the D-line really, really took that to heart, so... The next question, Noah, from Scott Dockerman. Well, based on your the experience level of the entire unit, especially inside, that was a big question mark going into the season. Uh, how do you think you guys have performed through three games, and, uh, and what do you think is the ceiling for this unit? I feel that we've performed pretty well. I mean, we don't really like to look past on look on our past performances. I mean, once it's Sunday, we like to flush it and get ready for our, for the next week, but. I think that we, we're just improvement driven and we just want to get better every day. That's something that KB instilled in us early this uh, fall camp, just trying to get better day by day and not really looking long term. But yeah. The next question from Leah Van. Um, I know that, you know, sacks aren't necessarily always like you know, the goal, but also it's great. Um, Y'all had seven sacks as a unit last game, which was the most since in a single game since like 2000 against Northwestern. Um, what is uh, what is special about this defensive line specifically? And, you know, how do you um, kind of come up? What do you take from that performance? Uh, yeah, uh, that was crazy performance. I know I didn't have any personally, but I mean, I try, I try to get as many disruptions as I can, but I mean, the group, I feel like we just play very well together. Like when we're all on the same page, communicating, clicking, like I feel like we can, we can accomplish a lot. So yet last week was really fun, but I mean, hopefully we can keep building on that and get more. I mean, eight would be real cool, so. The next question from Scott Dockerman. You know, how, how much has discipline played into the way you guys have performed this year? You know, going into Iowa State two weeks ago, for instance, I mean, veteran offensive line, great running back, veteran quarterback, and yet you, you guys performed your duties. Um, what was preached to you about it going into that performance, and then how have you guys applied it and uh, been able to be successful because of it? Yeah, dis discipline des definitely plays a large part. Like when we played the team, uh, Kent State last week, it was we the whole defense had to make sure they were in their gap because of how much movement they were doing along the offensive line. And uh, when it comes to pass rush, we've played three athletic, very mobile quarterbacks, so we know we have to stay on our shoulder and make sure we can't let like at the tackle we can't let them escape through the B gaps or the A gaps. And the ends know the same thing. We all have a responsibility when it comes to pass and pass and run game. And I think we're, we've done a good job of that so far. And I think we could still improve in some areas, but that's what we hope to do week to week. Along those lines, you're playing a team that runs a lot of gap, pin and pull, which if you're not, if your head's not on the swivel, you can get flattened pretty quickly. Uh, that's another challenge, I guess, for a lot of your younger players. You, you've certainly dealt with it with Wisconsin, but um, what what's kind of being impressed when you're playing a team like this especially with a lot of young players who never experienced, uh, you know, a 320 pound guard, come, you know, and blow yeah, you out. right. Yeah. I think it has a lot to do with preparation. Like I said, I mean, if you're looking at the film then I believe you can get a good jump on what they, what they're trying to do. And it really comes, starts with coming off the ball. You gotta, you gotta create knockback on your key. And if you don't, then chances are you're going to get pushed into the wash by the tackle or whoever's working the double team. So I think it really starts with that knockback and blow delivery on your key. All right, Noah, I'll speak to the group and thank you very much for taking your time this morning. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. You guys have a great day. How are you this morning? I'm good. How are y'all doing? Doing pretty well, thanks. Sounds like you can hear me all right and I can hear you. So we will get started with some questions for wide receiver Tyrone Tracy Jr. If you have a question for Tyrone, click on your participant button at the bottom of your screen, 
And we'll get rolling this morning, Tyrone, with a question from Scott, uh, excuse me, Chad Leistikone. Yeah, I beat Scott to it this time. It's my first first head-to-head win against Scott. Um, <laughs> hey, Tyrone, uh, I will ask you this question uh, because I know it's of high interest among fans. Kirk Ferentz said yesterday was your best offensive practice of the year. Would you say that's accurate, and uh, has that kind of continued throughout the week? Uh, yeah, I think it started on Monday, actually. Uh, Monday was uh, it's kind of our uh, slow day, walk-through day, um, but – we have to be, you know, mentally locked in, and we was. Um, we went out there with a purpose. Um, we anytime we go out to practice, we always try to have a purpose and get one percent better at something, um, just so that we're not just out there going through the plays and going through the motions. Um, and yeah, that is that's very accurate. Yesterday um, was very crisp. Um, it was, you know, going through the plays. It wasn't really a lot of uh, redos or doing it over again. Um, everybody knew their assignments, their alignments, and uh, we got it done. Does that give you some confidence that, you know, you guys are maybe taking the next step and you're excited to see what happens Saturday? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it gives us a confidence, but we, um, I think everyone know, understands that it starts in practice. So if you want to do it on Saturday, you got to do it, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday um, for it to show up on Saturdays. All right, Tyrone, the next question from the aforementioned Scott Dockman. Yeah, thanks, uh, Chad. Uh, congratulations on the win there. But <laughs> I wanted to ask you about tunnel screens. Uh, you had two thrown to you last week. The first one, it looked like you had it cut and then and slipped. I don't know if that was a shoe thing or, or what. But then the second one, you were able to really plow through and, and pick up a really needed first down on that big drive. Uh, how comfortable are you in running those, and, and how effective do you think they can be uh, moving forward? Yeah, uh, I slipped on that one. I, you know, it was, I had I seen a hole and uh, you know I tried to make a cut, but you know slipped. But uh, I think a ton of screens are definitely effective if you use them correctly. Um, I mean, I think we do a good job. Brian does a good job calling them at the right time. Um, I mean, I'm very comfortable running them. Uh, anytime I get the ball, you know, in open field, some type of open field, um, just give me some space to work with. I think you know it's. Uh, very effective, and I, I love I love doing them honestly. The next question, Tyrone, is from John Steppy. Hey, Tyrone, what's it been like? There's been a lot of talk about the success of the secondary this year. What's it like going against them in practice every day? Uh, it's definitely tough. Um, we have really good corners and uh, safeties. They're veterans, so. Um, you gotta be, you gotta be on your on your A game like, every day. Uh, you can't come out there and just you know try to lollygag through the motions and just try to get through the day. You gotta come out there and uh, actually you know compete. Um, they push us to go harder. Um, they do what they can, and we do our best to make sure that they are on their A game too. Because they're not, you know, offense. We're definitely gonna uh, take advantage of the opportunity. Tyrone, right, well, the next question from Kennington Smith. My question is about. Young receivers, Keegan, um, Arlen, even Jackson Ritter, you're a player who played early on in your career. From your perspective, what are the challenges that young receivers face, whether that's in the system or just adjusting to, to campus life, and how have you seen them you know, be able to, to adjust to that and have early success? Uh, one of my biggest things when I was younger was uh, just adjusting to the speed of college football. Going from uh, high school to college is the big difference in – um, speed of the game and how fast you know the balls come in how fast you gotta um, pick up on coverages and uh, learn how to run your routes differently um, that was probably the main thing and then the second biggest thing uh, was just understanding that you're not you know the guy anymore um, there's a lot of um, people and a lot of playmakers on the team that um, can do the same thing you're doing um, but you just have to understand that you know you are in the right place at the right time um, and I think that Keegan, Arlen, and uh, Jackson Ritter are all, you know, excelling at a high rate. I think they are um, doing the best that they can. Um, they try not to, um, you know, be selfish because I don't think they are. I think they just, you know, playmakers and, um, you know, everybody wants the ball. You know, I want the ball, you know, um, but there's also, um, you know, other people on the field that can uh, get the job done. So um, I think, you know, we're all doing a good job right now. Next question, Tyrone, from Leah Van. 
Tyrone, um, I was wondering how you would assess like your first three games so far of the season of your like what have you seen from yourself and what do you think you have left to improve? Um, I think the first three games uh, went really well, honestly. Um, we obviously have a lot to improve on. Um, just looking at that last game that we just played against Kent State. Um, but me personally, I think uh, I honestly probably just can be a little bit more um, vocal uh, on the sidelines. You know, um, my leadership is more uh, I'm going to show you and then you can just follow me. Um, so I think I can be a little bit more vocal, um, and then my blocking can be better too. Um, now that's a couple of things I'm working on, you know, um, in the next upcoming games and throughout the week. The next question, Tyrone, from Tom Kicker. Tyrone, about five minutes and thirty seconds left in the game, and you guys are up twenty-three-seven, and and uh, you guys come out firing. Uh, how surprised were you with that, with going to you and then going to Nico deep and? Um, what's that feel? You know, that's that's a different kind of Iowa than uh, than we would normally see. Uh, well, I wasn't really surprised, um, just because uh, we make it, we try to make it known that you know we're not the same Iowa from you know five years ago. Uh, we had many many playmakers on the team that can make plays, and I mean on Saturday you seen the ball in a lot of people different hands, you know, making some type of play or some type of um, big run just to, to help the team out. Um, so it wasn't really like that we're surprised. It was just like kind of a relief that, you know, is coming to reality. And we talk about it a lot um, in meetings and, and practice. So um, it feels good that this happened on Saturdays. The next question from John Steppy. How has it been about a month or so um, since you started selling merchandise? So kind of off the field here, how's that gone? Or is that something that you're just not thinking about during the season? Uh, I mean, it's gone pretty well. Uh, like before the season started, um, we sold out probably like a, a week and a half. So, I mean, it, it went pretty well. Um, but ever since the season started, I haven't really uh, paid much attention to it. I let, you know, my business partners, um, take care of that for me um, so I can focus on uh, football and football only. Well, school too, but for football purposes, football only. Um, but yeah, I think uh, it's gonna go, it's going pretty well. Um, it's gonna keep going pretty well, but um, right now I'm just kind of focused on football. Tyrone, the next question from Chad Leistico. Hey Tyrone, uh, I was talking to Brian Ferentz over the summer and he was mentioning, you know, last year, Amir got a lot of attention uh, from defenses. Uh, have you noticed that attention maybe swinging your way so far this season uh, from the opponents? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they definitely, you know, try to figure out where I'm at on the field. Um, but that with saying that, I think that, you know, just brings a lot of open spaces for other people to be open, uh, if I'm being honest. I know that um, going in the game, they might be keen on me, but that doesn't mean that um, – I shouldn't run my routes hard or um, shouldn't block, you know, to the best of my ability. Um, or, I mean, that still doesn't mean I'm not going to be open. Um, I, just saying that, uh, I just think that um, our offense is uh, has a lot of weapons and um, just that they're keen on me, that doesn't, you know, diminish our offense. It's going to make us better. I asked Kirk this yesterday. He said the Wildcats still in the playbook. Is that uh... – are you still a part of the Wildcat? That's my next question. Uh, yeah, I am. I am. Um, I, we're, we're waiting for it to get called, but uh, you know, I'm. We, st we, do, we do it in practice. We do it in practice, but uh, that's about it right now. Um, we still, we still perfecting it. All right, Tyrone. I'll speak for the group, and I say thanks for giving us your time this morning. Yeah. And good luck Saturday. Thank you. Thank you all.